Welcome to Grand Sumo Breakdown, the unofficial sumo podcast for official sumo fans. Welcome to Grand Sumo Breakdown. This is Ryan. This is Jake. And this is our Bonds K review for the Haru Basho that is coming up in just about 10-ish days now. Uh, this episode's coming out a little later than usual. Uh, Jake claims that he had other obligations that he had to do that were somehow more important than talking about the Bonds K. Yeah, what was that? Probably oh, the newsletter. I had a kid. That's what it was. Hey. That hasn't been stopping me for the past two and a half years. <laughs> that's not an excuse. You have rescheduled plenty of times, and that's fine. But I, I didn't also push back recording 15 minutes today because I was putting Riley to bed. No, that she, would be absurd. And she was being an absolute turd tonight. I was actually the one who was on time today. Yeah. That's but probably not going to last. As angry as she was, she got a bath. So going to consider that a win. Yep. All right, Jake. Why don't you tell us what's going on in the world of not parenthood, but amateur sumo? <laughs> yes, my other baby. <laughs> yeah. Um, coming up next weekend, the same weekend that the Basho starts is 2023 Nationals. At this point, you're probably screwed on if you wanted to get there, if you haven't bought your plane ticket yet. Uh, but yeah, March 11th, it will be streaming on the Grand Sumo Breakdown YouTube channel. Uh, I'll be there uh, doing brackets and uh, commentary as time allows and such. But uh, for the most part, um, uh, I will be making sure the event happens and runs. And then we will be adding commentary on top of that just to make sure that everybody watching knows where we're at in the brackets, you know, when the finals are, things like that. First and foremost, got to make sure it works. Yes. And it's going correctly. <laughs> <laughs> and it seems like there's a... Uh, a large number of the tasks are are upon my plate, so I will uh, <laughs> be having a blast uh, and doing my best to keep everybody in the loop on the stream. Uh, I will have some guests, depending on who's wrestling and when. But anyways, that is March 11th on the Grand Sumo Breakdown channel. Uh, go check out our newsletter for more details as well. Uh, that's on Facebook, Instagram, and all that junk. Um, and that's got uh, everything else you could possibly need. Uh, two we weeks after out that... A link to that newsletter on twitter i don't know if it doesn't do it automatically no i don't okay <laughs> and i don't think they it should does probably do that but yeah yeah i'll post it there too <laughs> if i remember by the time we're done recording two weeks after nationals is the kuma bash the first youth only tournament in my i guess the modern era of amateur sumo it's gonna be in nashville uh also in the newsletter there's some information on that one but that's gonna be hosted by the antioch high school sumo club uh, also, um, the, the brainchild of, uh, Nate Hudson, a guy that we've had on the show before, uh, he's a teacher at the high school and was like, Hey kids, let's do sumo. And they've, they've done well enough that they're hosting an, uh, an entire event just for, uh, youth wrestlers, which I think is pretty cool. Last but not least coming up at the end of April, we can officially announce the Dallas roller town showdown, uh, which is going to be at a brewery. Uh, it's coinciding with a new beer release and everything. So it's like a big old thing for like, um, it, it's the same brewery where they recruited two of their, uh, longest, uh, most steadfast members. The last time they had an event there, the Garza brothers showed up to have a drink and they're like, Oh, cool. I guess there's sumo happening tonight. I guess we're going to try sumo tonight. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, now they are, <laughs> now they are some mainstays of the club. So yeah, real excited for that. Uh, it's going to be a brutal travel schedule. For uh, my wife, who will be without me for those times, but uh, I'm going to have fun. Yeah. <laughs> I assume you're taking Sammy with you. That you would, I'm not going to, no. Ooh. I thought we were going to expose that kid to as much sumo as physically possible. With the people that we know in sumo, maybe that's a bad idea. Fair. <laughs> <laughs> No, he, uh, I, I would be shocked if he makes it to a year without going to one of these events, but we'll see what happens. <laughs> but yeah, anyways, that's where we're at. Um, as always, reach out to us if you have any more information or if you want more information on how to participate. All right, sounds good. So let's move on and talk about 
the Haru Bonske starting at the top with Yokozuna Ozeki Teruno Fuji as he will once again play the role of Yokozuna Ozeki uh, on the Bonske only as Takakesho remains the sole Ozeki because once again the world will implode if we do not have two Ozeki <laughs> on the Bonske at Ozeki on the west side is Takakesho. Uh, and in a first for this podcast, I'm going to be giving a snub of the Bonske nomination to an Ozeki. Uh, Takakesho could have gotten to Yokozuna. He had a playoff loss, which is considered a Yusho equivalent, followed up by a Yusho, and the YDC denied to even discuss the matter. Uh, not that I necessarily disagree with that, but you know what? This is kind of lacking on snubs of the Bonds K. So snub of the Bonds K for Takake Show. Yeah, it's it's one of those things where the fact that it could have happened at all is more than usual. Um, yeah, the, it's, it's, yeah. It was the very first time where Abasho ended and we're like, he might be Yokozuna. Mm-hmm. Like, it, there's never been a situation where that has been where we've been that close. So, like, yeah, yeah I guess in a way, in a way, I, I I absolutely agree here that could have been Yokozuna. So yeah. he got snubbed. Mm-hmm. Uh, moving on down to Sekiwake, where for the fourth consecutive Basho at the Sekiwake 1 rank, it will remain unchanged. Wakatakakage will be Sekiwake East 1, and Hoshoryu will be Sekiwake West 1. And then I keep saying Sekiwake 1, that must mean we've got a Sekiwake 2, and indeed we do, as Kiribayama will be joining Wakatakakage and Hoshoryu at the Sekiwake rank. He had an 11-4 record from Komosubi in the previous Basho, and that's going to be enough to force open a third Sekiwake slot. This is going to be a career-high rank for Kiribayama. Yama and a very hype uh Sekiwake group I think very hype and I think if you listen to um oh my god Sumo Kaboom Jesus I can't believe I forgot their name <laughs> a, a very a Rude. very a very sexy group of sexy uh Sekiwake sexy wake if you will I think I will yes actually yeah uh yeah didn't they just put out their like Valentine's episode where they do their annual uh, determination of who is the most sexiest of the Rikshi? Yes, and I believe Kiribayama was the winner this year, uh, tore away that title from defending champ Hoshoryu. So two of the last three sexiest Rikshi winners, according to Subo Kaboom, are at the rank of Sexy Wake. I was going to say the same if you didn't get there first. Well done. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, let's move on to a much less sensual rank, and that is Komosubi. <laughs> uh, at Komosubi 1, we were debating – oh, we weren't debating. <laughs> I, w- I was debating with myself uh, on whether or not Wakamoto Haru would jump ahead of Kotono Waka to take the Komosubi 1 East ranking. Uh, in the Hatsu Basho, Kotono Waka was ranked Komosubi 1 West. He had an 8-7 and seven record, and Wakamoto Haru was ranked Komosubi 2 West, and he had a 9-6 and six record. So we were wondering, with uh, Wakamoto Haru having the better record would they jump him ahead of koto nowaka and deny koto nowaka a chance to get any kind of promotion uh that uh, after he had a winning record and ultimately on the episode i had said no i don't think i think they're going to move koto nowaka to komosubi east and wakamoto haru at komosubi west keep him in the order that they were in but I couldn't change my guess the Bonds K prediction that had Wakamoto Haru ahead of Kotonowaka. And it's a good thing I couldn't change it because that's how it ended turning up. Uh, <laughs> nice. Wakamoto Haru at Komosubi 1 East and Kotonowaka at Komosubi 1 West. Uh, it seems a little odd that Wakamoto Haru would jump ahead of Kotonowaka when he only had one more win than him. Uh, if you remember back a couple of Bashos ago to the Kyushu Basho, Hoshoryu had three more wins than Wakataka Kage at the Sekiwake rank, uh, but they stayed in the same order. My best guess mm-hmm. for what happened there is that they would have had to demote Wakataka Kage down to Sekiwake West in order to move Hoshoryu ahead of them, where here we could just leave Koto no Waka where he was at and move Wakamoto Haru into an open slot ahead okay. of him. Uh, so that that could be the reasoning. The other solution to this is that there's there's a new man in charge of the Bonds K committee, and maybe 
they're seeing things a little bit differently. Maybe they're seeing things closer to how they did it two decades ago, which we'll get to when we get down to the end of the Bonds K. Uh, so, <laughs> oh boy. Yeah. So this will be something to keep an eye on in upcoming Bonds K. Some of the new things that we're seeing on this Bonds K that kind of seem fishy to me now, is it just a one Bonds K uh, occurrence, which we've seen some weird Bonds Ks that seem to break with all the other trends and then go back to how they've always done it? Or is this due to uh, Isekahama getting the boot from the Sekiwa, not Sekiwake, the uh, Bonds what K. are those? Bonds K committee. Yeah, but what are the Shipan, Shipan committee oh. who put together the Bonds K? Uh, so we'll see if kind of these trends continue moving forward. Uh, so we do have a Komosubi to rank. There were two new spots opened up for Komosubi. I, I keep saying two new ranks opened up. We're staying with four, but kind of as Jake and I talked about on the preview episode, my assumption is they're starting with the base Bonds K in mind every single time, which would mean two Sekiwake, two Komosubi. And if anybody warrants to create new slots, they're going to do that a new each basho it just happens that for like the past three or four basho we've been able to create those two extra uh komosubi slots so that's why it's been consistent it's not just like oh we're gonna have four komosubi now uh because right. we opened them up one time randomly no uh, so it's it's, just... it's more of a situation where we it's a coincidence that this not super uncommon thing has happened a few times in a row it's not yeah. it's not the new normal it's just you know, a, what do you call that? The the clustering illusion where like yeah. true randomness, like you start to see patterns just because your brain is searching for patterns doesn't mm -hmm. mean they're actually there. Yeah, we, we hadn't seen four Komosubi or even like three Komosubi, I think, since 2019 uh, after not the Basho after Asanoyama won his Yusho, but I think two Bashos after that, uh, him and Hokuto Fuji created. Why do you remember that? Because this is what I do. Uh, yeah, they created uh, four Komosubi slots. So I think it had been like three years since we'd seen these extra Komosubi. Uh, it just so happens that we're seeing them every single show now. <laughs> yeah. uh, but the two guys who created those two new Komosubi slots are Daisho, who had a 10-5 and five record for Magashira 1 West. Uh, so that was enough to open up a new spot and jump over Toby Zaru, uh, where Toby Zaru had an 8-7 and seven record for Magashira 1 East, and he got the Komosubi 2 West ranking. Uh, so those are our final two guys in the Sanyaku rank. So our Sanyaku numbers have dropped from 10 in the previous Basho as we had four Sekiwake instead of the three that we currently have. And then everything else stayed the same. So we've got nine Rikshi in the Sanyaku, which means the joy extends down to Maigashira 4 East, that kind of imaginary line on the Bonds K. And then the end of Maku Uchi, a very real hard line, now ends at Maigashira 17 East instead of Maigashira 16. West. Gotcha. So let's talk about our Maigashira and the Maigashira getting the top spot this time is Tamawashi after a nine and six record from Maigashira to West. Uh, this confirms our thinking that the last Bonds K was not precedent setting. Remember, we had crazy scenario where if we didn't open up these extra Sanyaku slots, Abby was going to get a two rank promotion after a 12 and three Yusho win. Um, and we just couldn't let that happen. Uh, so, because we saw in that uh, Basho that a nine and six may say forced open a new Komosubi slot. Well, a nine and six Tamawashi from the same rank is not forcing open a new Komosubi slot like he shouldn't. He's just going to be the top guy in the Maigashira ranks where if he manages a winning record, he is guaranteed to be in the Sanyaku next time. Uh, and then joining Tamawashi at the Maigashira one rank on the west side, we have Shodai falling completely out of the Sanyaku ranks for the first time since Hatsu 2020 where he went 13-2 and two and won the June U show. Could he do it again? This is the part, Jake, where you immediately say, absolutely not. I Sorry, I thought it was rhetorical. <laughs> it, it, it kind of was. <laughs> I don't think anybody realistically expects Shodai to get 13 wins again. I am now curious, because I know Shodai has two 13-win Basho in his career. I wonder how that lines up with Takakesho, who has 
also to 13 win Basho in his career. Mm. But Taka Keisho has managed to be a lot more consistent around those 13 win Bashos, but it is interesting that uh, both of them have the same high peak uh, of 13 wins in a Basho, and they've both done it twice. Moving on to the Magashira 2 rank, we have Abi on the east side, rising up one rank from Magashira 3 east after an 8-7 and seven record. And then on the west side, we have Ryuden rising up two ranks after a 9-6 and six record from Magashira 5 east. Uh, so we talked about in the last Bonske recap episode about some tiebreaker rules that a lot of people making Bonskes probably already knew definitively, but I was just kind of finally trying to track all the tiebreaker rules. And this actually breaks uh, the tiebreaker rules. Because if we followed the rules, first you looked at the east-west side. Both were on the east side. Okay. Then you look at who had the most wins. Well, Ryudin had nine wins. Abi had eight wins. Ryudin should be ranked ahead of Abi. But that obviously isn't what happened. And I firmly believe that's because Joy Bias Abi was able to stay ahead of Ryudin. He was in the Joy. Ryudin wasn't. Easy enough. And then Maigashira 3. This is a, another rank where Joy Bias came into play as Mitakayumi falls one rank to Maigashira 3 East after a 7-8 and eight record for Maigashira 2. And Nishikigi rises to the Maigashira 3 West rank after a 9-6 and six record from Maigashira 5 West. So Nishikigi deserved to be a full rank ahead of Mitakayumi, but... Due to Mitaki Yumi previously being in the joy, he stayed ahead of Nishikigi and avoided being over demoted by a half rank. Hmm. Okay. Which is something that we talked about on the preview episode. That's that's what I thought would happen. Uh, because Nishikigi? You're gonna promote Nishikigi over Mitaki Yumi? Nah, come on. Not happening. Not come happening. On. Yeah, come on. Then we get to our final Rikshi that will be in the joy at Magashira 4 East, and that is where, unfortunately, my perfect run of predictions on this Bonds K ends as the first 15 Rikshi on this Bonds K I had perfectly placed in my prediction. Luckily, at the Magashira 4 rank, I only swapped out the east and west sides of the rank, so I at least continue my streak of having every Rikshi at the correct numerical rank. Uh, but taking the Magashira 4 east spot in a little bit of a surprise is Onosho, rising up four ranks after his 10-5 and five record from a Magashira uh, 8 ranking. And he... The reason it's a surprise is because he ends up ahead of Mese, who is dropping four ranks after a 5-10 and 10 record from Komosubi. So on the surface, this ordering makes complete sense. Onosho deserved to be two ranks ahead of Mese, but we have seen plenty of times recently where a Rikshi dropping out of the Sanyaku ranks ends up ahead of a rising Rikshi from the mid Maigashira ranks. I pointed out a couple of different occasions that happened recently on the Bonds K preview. Um, so despite Onosho deserving to be ahead of Mesa here by two full ranks, I'm still going to make him a luck of the Bonds K candidate here <laughs> since, since he's bucking some recent trends that we have seen. Sure. Then we get to Maigashira 5, where another trend is being bucked here as Koto Shoho is going to rise eight ranks from Maigashira 13 after an 11 and 4 performance to the Maigashira 5 East ranking. Uh, the trend he is bucking here is the well established, already on this Bonds K, Joy Bias, as he is jumping ahead of Midori Fuji, who was ranked Maigashira 3, firmly within the Joy, and deserve. Well, he was the last guy in the Joy on the previous Bonds K. <laughs> um, so maybe, so it's not, less maybe not egregious. firmly. Yeah. He, he was in there, but just barely. Um, and he deserved to be the same rank as Koto Shoho. So as we saw with Mitaka Yumi, Joy Bias can overcome deserving to be below someone by a full rank. So I'm kind of curious why we didn't see Midori Fuji offered the same courtesy of, I mean, he deserved to be the same rank of Koto Shoho. If Mitaki Yumi can be ahead of a guy he deserves to be one rank below, why can't Midori Fuji be ahead of a guy he deserves to be the same rank as? Sure. But ultimately, Midori Fuji ends up falling two ranks from Magashira 3 West after a 6-9 and nine record. I don't like this new Bonds K guy. He's not consistent. That's it. Neither were the old ones. Let's go back to the old guys that were also inconsistent, but they were they were like the devil. I knew we know. how they were inconsistent. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just once again, 
Just wait till we get to the end of the Bonske. I, I've got words. Okay. <laughs> we got a sternly worded letter from JSA West here. That, that's right. I'll get the stationery out. I appreciate it. Uh, my Gashira six ranking uh, on the east side. We're, we're, we're taking a look at Endo here because Joy Bias was enough for Midori Fuji to land ahead of Endo. Midori Fuji was My Gashira five west. Endo's here at My Gashira six east. Um, and Endo's rising three ranks from My Gashira nine after a nine to six record. So what I'm curious about here is Koto Shoho, Midori Fuji, and Endo all deserve to be the same rank after the Hatsu Basho. Based on traditional tiebreaker rules, Koto Shoho should have been ranked first, which is what happened. But then it should have been followed by Endo, then Midori Fuji. My prediction had Midori Fuji at the top of that group, just joy bias. And so I, I don't know why Koto Shoho is getting the benefit of breaking joy bias while Endo is not getting that benefit. Uh, something The first thing that comes to my mind is Koto Shoho was the only one that was on the east side. So maybe that made the difference here. But once again, I go back to Mitaki Yumi, who deserved to be a full rank below Nishikigi and was still ahead of him. So if we're looking at joy bias, East West shouldn't make a difference if somebody that's deserves to be a full rank below somebody can be ahead of them. So yeah, not sure yeah. what's going on there. A little bit of head scratcher. Isn't the East West kind of like your second or third tiebreaker after like your initial ones or something? No. So if it's um, two guys that both deserve to be like Magashira eight, if one was previously on the East side, one was on the West side, I'm always going to put the guy on the East side there first, uh, regardless of, wins or where they were previously ranked hmm. okay obviously once we get past like joy bias and sanyaku bias once we get past the rikshi that were in that group then it's pretty seems pretty strict in following those rules gotcha. so okay midori fuji being in the joy kind of threw the math off a little, a little bit i just can't pinpoint what Quite how much yeah yeah i can't figure out the equation they were using to land at their answer and why it wasn't the same as my equation <laughs> then we get to the Maigashira 6 West rank, and we finally get to a Rikshi that I did not place at the correct numerical rank in my prediction after placing the first 20 Rikshi at the correct rank. So the streak-breaking honor goes to Sada no Umi. He He's getting back at me because I chose him to be me, my chump in the previous Basho. Uh, it, it got me to a win, so I appreciate that. But he, he's breaking my streak now, so he might he's getting the better of me here. Sadanomi's revenge. Exactly. Yep, absolutely. Uh, he's falling two ranks uh, from the Magashira four rank after a six and nine record. So this choice is another it's a it's a bigger head scratcher for me on this bonds k uh because hokuto fuji sada no umi were tied for who deserved this rank hokuto fuji was on the east side previously and had more wins than sada no umi he should be winning that tiebreaker every single time both of these guys were outside of the joy but sada no umi did fight some of not all of but some of a joy schedule. He fought some Sanyaku. He fought some guys, Mike Shira one through three, but then he also fought his fair share of guys like five, six, seven, and then down at the end of the Bonske, like 16, something like that. Uh, so that that's the only thing that I could think of that would give Sada no Umi the edge here over uh, Hokuto Fuji, um, unless they wanted to give Hokuto Fuji a full rank demotion after his seven and eight record, which is something that I explicitly stated on the preview that the bonds cake committee was not doing. And in the past, that is something they wouldn't do. They weren't demoting a seven and eight guy, like a full rank just because he had a seven and eight record. They looked at, well, who deserves to be ahead of you? Well, if there's nobody that deserves to be ahead of you, we're not going to move you. We're not going to move you up but we're at least not going to move you down. Yeah, uh, our, the seven and eights have always been kind of our like damage control. Like if we have to leave them in, in place, we can. Yeah, and it's it's partly Hokuto Fuji that makes me think they were just forcing this full rank demotion, but it it's really Ura when we get to him that it's a lot more egregious, his demotion <laughs> after his seven and eight record. And the only solution I could come up with for these two guys is they just wanted to make sure that they were demoted a full rank after a seven and eight record. But then once we get further down the bonds K that itself is contradicted. So who knows? <laughs> so it, what it, the hell <laughs> it's pro it's probably just a dartboard 
situation, whoever the dart lands on, we're going to put them next on the bonds, K. But damn it, that's not how I look at things, and I must find a reason. <laughs> okay, fair enough. So at Migashir 7 on the east side, we have Hokuto Fuji dropping one rank from Migashir 6 after a 7-8 and eight record. Uh, and and what, back to Hokuto Fuji, it's not like he would have stayed put if we didn't put Sada and Umi there, he would have slid over from Migashira 6 East to Migashira 6 West. So it's not like he wouldn't have gotten any demotion. I feel like they just wanted to force a full numerical rank demotion for him. Yeah. Uh, and for that reason, I'm, ma I'm making him a snub of the Bonds K candidate. Um, I think I've mentioned all of the candidates so far. Yeah. Takakesha snub, Onosho, Luck. Hokuto Fuji snub. Okay. Just want to make sure I wasn't skipping over anybody. <laughs> Don't want to snub anybody by not mentioning their snubbage. Exactly. Uh, and then joining Hokuto Fuji at Maegashira 7 West is, well, not joining Hokuto Fuji at Maegashira 7 <laughs> West. Joining Hokuto Fuji at Maegashira 7. We know 7. what you meant. <laughs> Shut up. Will be Takayasu on the west side as he is falling eight ranks from Sekiwake after pulling out of the Hatsubasho uh, after injuring himself and winning only one match. So in my prediction, I had Ura at this spot holding steady at his previous rank after a seven and eight record. Takayasu deserved to be three ranks lower than Ura. And as I said before with Hokuto Fuji, it just feels like the new people in charge decided that they want to make sure they were pushing down Richie that had seven and eight records, at least in this part of the Bonds K. Because uh, just look at Nagoya of last year, Ura went seven and eight at Maegashira three. The next closest Rikshi that deserved to be ranked on the Bonds K deserved to be two ranks lower than Ura. They didn't demote Ura in that situation just for the sake of moving him down. There was no one that deserved that rank, so he kept it. That very easily could have happened here. Um, so obviously they didn't decide to go that direction. So we move on to Maegashira 8 East, where obviously that's where you would have Ura. Oh, of wait course. a minute. Oh, dear. It's Ichi Yamamoto at Maegashira 8 East. This will be a career high ranking for Ichi Yamamoto. Uh, so Ichi Yamamoto rises six ranks from Maegashira 14 to a career high rank Maegashira 8 East after a 10 and 5 record. So putting Takayasu ahead of Ura, I'll give them the benefit of the doubt. Takayasu was a Sekiwake. They get special treatment when they're falling down the bonds gate. I'm uh, not Sekiwake, Ryan. Not when Takayasu's there. Um, <laughs> Whoa. Come on now. <laughs> Fine. Takayasu was a sexy wake, and we Thank all you. know sexy wake get special treatment. So I'm not I'm not going to get my panties in a bunch over that. But to give Ichi Yamamoto. <laughs> not for that particular reason. Not for that particular reason. <laughs> I'm getting to the, the panty bunching. They – they put Ichi Yamamoto ahead of Ura, and in order to put Ichi Yamamoto ahead of Ura, they gave him an unnecessary over promotion. He had a five and ten record. Typically, you see a jump of five to four. Ichi Yamamoto's jumping up six ranks to go ahead of Ura, who he deserved to be one rank lower than. So it 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 just seems unexplainable to me, unless the Bonds K committee decided that seven and eight Rikshi needed to get one full rank of demotion. Like if we had Ura at, I mean, Ichi Yamamoto would still be promoted six ranks from 14 to eight, but he didn't need to jump Ura to push him down further. I mean, it, it's just like a half rank difference, but. But it's an, it's an entirely inexplicable half rank difference. That makes it, no sense. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. We're, we're not going to come into these episodes like, why is this guy five ranks higher? Like, this makes no sense. When you get mad at things on the bottom, it is because of half rank things, because uh, that's that's just like the level of detail we are currently yeah. at. <laughs> yeah, you can get you can get it within like one or two ranks fairly easily. So the nitty gritty is where the difference comes in and where we actually like learn something. Yeah. And this one seems to be explicitly trying to th just throw us for a loop. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so we. We missed uh, a few guys in the Magashir of six through eight range. We got them all fairly close. Nobody off my more than a full rank, but uh, nobody had a perfect landing spot. We get we get back to a nice streak for my predictions at the Magashira nine rank. So we got Aoyama and Hira de Umi both receiving one rank promotions after eight and seven records from Magashira ten. Uh, 
So Aoyama will remain on the east side at the Mike Shear 9 rank, and Hiro Umi will remain on the west side. And this will be a career high rank for Hira Umi. Then we get to the Maigashira 10 ranking, where on the east side we will have Miyogiryu falling four ranks after a uh, not six and nine record from the Maigashira 6 ranking. And this actually ends up to be a little bit of an over demotion for Miyogiryu, dropping four ranks after a six and nine record, where typically the cap you see on that is three ranks. Uh, and Really, there's just a group of guys that all deserve to be the same rank that Miyugiru is a part of, and he lost the tiebreakers to take those ranks. So really nothing that could be done for it. It's what I predicted to happen. It's what happened. It makes sense. Sure. So do you want to take a break here and uh, to analyze our tiebreaking rules that we established on the previous Bonds K? Because we had a group of four, Rikshi, Ichi Yamamoto, Aoyama, Hirodumi, and Miyugiru. Like I said, they all deserve to be the same rank, and none of them were in the joy or Sanyaku to throw any additional rules or scenarios in there. It was, should be all pretty uh, laid out flat on what should happen with these guys. Uh, and I said on the preview, this would be our best test on this Bonds K for our tie-breaking rules to see if they were consistent. And luckily, they were. So our first tie <laughs> For break... five minutes? Sure. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so the Rikshi that were on the east side, which is the first thing we want to look at, east versus west side, all the Rikshi that were on the east side in this group ended up ahead of the Rikshi that were on the west side. And then within those two subgroups, the Rikshi that had more wins ended up ahead of the Rikshi with fewer wins. And they were all placed in descending order based on the number of wins on the Bonds K. So, of course... They Bonsuke committee put Ura between Ichi Yamamoto and the rest of that pack of four. But amongst that group of four, the logic for the tiebreakers remained consistent in the order that they ended up in. Uh, so that that should help me out in my predictions in the for, in the future and just figuring out where everybody should end up if there are ties. Sure. Yeah, that makes sense. I mean, it it, it seems like you're you're defining them a little bit more strictly as we see them in action more often yeah and then you're also gonna have me coming up with bullshit rules when i'm looking too deeply at 20 year old bonds case i'm like you know what i don't think jury five and six guys are gonna get as good of promotions into maku uchi as jury one through three guys and the bonds case comes out and i'm like oh no i really really overthought all that stuff <laughs> yeah. uh, so we're gonna have that but we're also gonna stumble upon some actual things and i feel like that one <laughs> is actually happening yeah yeah at Maigashira 10 on the west side we've got nishiki fuji uh falling six ranks after a four and 11 record for Maigashira four he was tied for who deserved this rank with azumaru nishiki fuji was on the east side azumaru was on the west side tiebreaker went to nishiki fuji score one for jsa west that's right Magashira 11, that is where we get Azumaru, where for the first time in the decade since his Maku Uchi debut, he is rising up in the Magashira ranks to a career what? high rank of Magashira 11. What? I know. What? No. Uh, we, Jake, you were there. We've detailed this. You're we've talking like about someone else. <laughs> we've mentioned it on every podcast we've done since it happened. Azumaru finally got a winning record in the top division. I will remember Azumaru's record over my dead body. That is, that, <laughs> I can promise you that. He, he is, <laughs> he is uh, many performances better than his previous best performance to get me to give it, to, to get me to care. Um, so <laughs> I'm just going to say that. Fair. Uh, but yeah. Azumaru had a <laughs> 9 and 6 record for Magashira 14, rises up to a career high rank of Magashira 11. He, he really just screwed me in fantasy. Like, there's really nothing else. That's true. Yeah, I it's forgot the about only, that. That's the only way I can even drum up that much emotion. Yeah. No, makes sense. He he made you the loser in our prediction series. So, I, hey, it's why I like Azumaru more than I ever have before. <laughs> Which is, like, registering on the scale of caring one notch. <laughs> exactly, yes. <laughs> uh, so joining Azumaru at the Magashira 11 rank will be Takanosho, who will be Magashira 11 West. He's falling two ranks from Magashira 9 after a 6-9 and nine record. 
And so now we get to Kageyaki at Magashira 12 East, who will stay put after a 7-8 and eight record from this same ranking, which normally completely fine with. I don't I don't care. Seven and eight guys, they can they can stay wherever they want. Except for the fact that they dicked over Ura after his seven and eight record earlier on the Bonske. Was was Takara Fuji deserving to be two ranks lower than Kagayaki? Not good enough to put Takara Fuji ahead of Kagayaki? Takiyasu being three ranks lower than Ura was good enough for him to drop Ura. Or what about what about Dai Dai Shoho? He was coming up from Jurio, but he deserved to be the same rank as Kagayaki. Why not push Kagayaki down for Dai Shoho's sake? It it just <laughs> I just want consistency. You're, you're really okay. working yourself up here, man. <laughs> I am. And we trust me, we haven't even got to the to the big stuff. Uh <laughs> so yeah, I just I just don't get it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I get it. I, I, this is what I predicted happened. I completely understand why they did it, but why that got a dick over Ura like that? What did he do to you? What did he do? Uh, speaking of Takara Fuji, uh, who was not deemed good enough to bump Kageyaki down at least a half rank, he is going to rise four ranks here to Maegashira 12 West after an eight and seven record from Maegashira 16, uh, which we also predicted. And that ends our streak of, like, eight straight perfect guesses. And back to the dumpster we go. Back to the dumpster, because now we get Jurio promotees, which, as I mentioned before, I way overthought. We're going to uh, get freaky here, aren't we? <laughs> a little bit. So, my guess year 13, on the east side, we are going to put Dai Shoho, rising nine ranks from Jurio 6 after a 12 and 3 record. So I, I followed the rules that we had well established on this series. Be a dick to the Jurio promotees. And it turns out, for maybe the first time in history, I was too much of a dick to the Richie <laughs> in my predictions. We found as, the line. <laughs> yeah. As the Bonske committee is placing him one rank higher than my prediction. Uh, I was definitely overthinking my analysis, um, but it, it makes sense. If I wasn't trying extra hard to be a dick to Dai Shoho, this is where I would have put him. He deserves to be two ranks ahead of any remaining Makuuchi Rikshi, which we have noted is our typical rule when we start to place Jurio Rikshi. And while I still put... Uh, that Makauchi, that Makauchi Rikshi that deserved to be two ranks lower than Dai Shoho. In my prediction, I put him ahead of Dai Shoho. The Bonske committee stuck to the two rank rule, uh, and the Bonske committee they were also consistent with another one of our rules by putting the first Jurio promotee behind the last Rikshi in the Makauchi division to have a winning record. So that was Takada Fuji. So that is why he got a four rank promotion after a eight and seven record is because we had to vault him ahead of the first Jurio promotee. So they're not <laughs> they're still being a dick, but. They're still not treating them like people, which but, is but only just, yeah, yeah, yeah. Still not treating them like people, which is what I appreciate. It's what I want to see. Yeah. So I, I'm not overly surprised by the Jurio promotee placements yet. Uh, we get to Maegashira 13 on the west side. This will be Koto Oko, Koto Eko, who will hold his previous rank after a seven and eight record. Once again, why can he hold his rank? Oho deserved to be only one rank below Koto Eko, the exact same as Ichi Yamamoto and Ura. So once again, I ask, where is the goddamn consistency? What gives? What gives indeed? Then, uh, at... side note, Koto Oko is like probably the most Pokemon sounding uh, Shikona I've ever heard, and there's some really Pokemon sounding Shikona out there. Koto Oko would be a good Pokemon. That's abs That's absolutely correct. What are What are some other good Pokemon sounding Shikona, Jake? Um, I put you on the spot. I think Shodai, Shodai feels pretty Pokemon-y. Okay. Uh, that it's got to be one that's like simple to say. Uh, is I feel it like Dai Shoho? Dai Shoho. Shoho that's a good one. It. Yeah. Uh, what about Oho? Isn't Oho kind of already a Pokemon? Isn't there one there's, that's there's Ho O? Ah, oh, that's what I'm thinking of. Yeah. Same letters, add an apostrophe, call yeah. it good. Yeah. Yeah, from now on, Koto Eko is Koto Oko in my book, and he is a Pokemon. Uh, so he is now my favorite Rikshi. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was that was, that was easy. easy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Anyways, Koto Oko. Yeah. Moving on. 
At Magashira 14, we are going to have a pair of Rikshi making their Makuuchi debuts. Uh, Keen Bozon will be Magashira 14 East, rising seven ranks after an 11 4 record from Jurio 5. And Bushozon will be Magashira 14 West, rising three ranks after a 9 6 record from Jurio 1. Once again, my thoughts about being extra mean to Rikshi ranked below Jurio 3 blew up in my face as Keen Bozon ended up ahead of Bushozon. It, in my deliberations for this prediction, I thought Bushozon would be ahead of Keen Bozon, just due solely to his higher rank, ignoring all other typical tiebreak rules. So really getting their order wrong is on me. Uh, but in my defense, that same thing happened in the previous Ba show. So I feel somewhat justified in my reasoning of the order that I did. Uh, so me being wrong about that was completely and utterly expected. Jake said, I asked Jake, what's did I most likely get wrong on the bonds guy? He said that jury of shit. Uh, and he was absolutely right. Uh, <laughs> it's usually but, a safe bet. But this bonds K committee, this newly formed bonds K committee, which I really think is the same bonds K committee. It's just a new guy in charge. They it's broke. like when some big company gets like a bad court judgment or goes bankrupt or whatever. And they like, they re they rebrand. That's all that's yeah. going on. It's yeah. the same people in the same positions or whatever. But yeah, whatever whatever caused it, they they broke a holy rule when it comes to <laughs> Jurio promotees. They they broke the two rank rule. Both Keen Bozon and Bushozon deserve to be only one rank ahead of Oho, and they still ended up ahead of Oho. What? So I I what? I don't I don't like it any more than you do, Jake. <laughs> so I I guess that this new regime has decided that Jurio Rikshi aren't quite the subhumans the previous bonds K committee <laughs> thought that they were. All right. Okay. Let's let's go down to Maigashira 15 and this is where my entire worldview is shattered. As we have Hoku Seho rising 3 ranks after a 9 and 6 record from Jurio 2. And in doing so, he will be ranked ahead of Oho who deserve to be the same rank as Hoku Seho. So what we're not we... just breaking the two rank rule. What, we're breaking. What are we... What, I... what what are we even doing here? Are you telling me I'm supposed to treat Jurio Rikshi like they're actual people now with fair treatment and equal rights on the Bonske? I will not stand for this. This goes against everything that you, the Bonske committee, has taught me about this inferior <laughs> group of people. I people. That's a strong word. <laughs> I am forced to call Jurio Rikshi people now due to their fair treatment on this Bonds K. I, <laughs> it's disgusting. I, it's bigotry. <laughs> I might, I like actually talking about, I might actually throw up. Like, take, take all the time you need. Yeah. I understand that this is, this is a big deal. You gotta, you, you gotta regroup when, when you experience trauma like this. I understand. Yeah. It's when you hold a belief so dearly, <laughs> <laughs> and it's it's just shown to you to be a complete and utter lie. Like, you have to reassess everything in your life. And it's only been four days since this Bonds K came out. That's not <laughs> nearly enough time for me to adjust to this new worldview. So I apologize. I yeah. If I've seemed off on my game this episode, it's it's because I I am. I I don't. I don't know who I am as a person anymore. And and frankly, this this could be my last Bonds K prediction. We'll, we'll have it's to not, see. It's not just that the universe is is counter to the way that you thought it was, but it's the fault of people lying to you, really. Right. Yeah. Like that makes it so much worse that someone would deliberately do this to someone. Yeah. Someone who Some... believes so strongly in Bonds K rules. Yeah. Somebody would treat a Jurio Rikshi like an equal to a Maku Uchi Rikshi. Like it it's honestly disgusting. Unbelievable. Like the next thing that you're gonna tell me is we could have one Ozeki on the Bonds K and that the world wouldn't implode upon itself immediately. Like yeah. If I, if you I mean, take that away from me, <laughs> yeah. I, I don't even know what I have anymore. Oh God, what if Terano Fuji like retired without anybody getting to Oz oh man. I, I I can't th I can't just think just for right context now. for how strongly Ryan believes in rules. Uh, one of our friends uh, we we were we were uh, staying in an Airbnb on vacation this weekend, and one of our friends was on a ladder with only two points of contact. Ryan called nine one one. Yeah, like we had to. Yeah, we had to like talk to the police and be like, 
you just ignore him, please. We had to, don't arrest we, him. I I forced us all to have to pool our money together to post bail for our friend. So don't don't push. You me didn't on this. pitch it on that. Well, of course I did it. I forced everybody else to. <laughs> he he only had two points of contact on the ladder. Yeah. I was correct. <laughs> what do you want from me? <laughs> I should say former friend. Right. Yeah. Anyways, though, what's the next rank? They have been excommunicated. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, with Oho getting uh Hokuseiho, look at Vonsuke, whatever. Um, Ho- <laughs> Oho is gonna end up at Maegashira 15 West, a fall of seven ranks from Maegashira 8 after a four and 11 performance. And honestly, I, I assume Oho is filing a protest against the Vonsuke committee as we speak. I hope uh, so. Yeah, due to this patently unfair treatment against him by treating others fairly. It, <laughs> what kind of world is that? <laughs> So I I imagine the remaining Rikshi on this Bonske are preparing to sit out the Haru Basho in protest as well. They all deserve to be one rank behind Hokuseho, which by their God-given right of being Makauchi Rikshi and actual people means they deserve to be ahead of Hokuseho. Yep. But in case they do show up to compete, which I think not likely whatsoever. Uh, this is the order they will appear on the bonds K. So you have Chio Shoma falling five ranks to Maegashira 16 East after a five and 10 record for Maegashira 11. Sudugisho falling one rank to Maegashira 16 West after a seven and eight record for Maegashira 15 East. In fact, Sudugisho is being over demoted by a half rank because he is now ranked behind Hoku Seho. How, what, how is that fair? <laughs> Explain that to me, Jake. How are we over demoting a Makauchi Rikshi in favor of a promising young upstart, but yet still Jurio scum Hokuseho? <laughs> I I got nothing, man. I, I I'm I'm drafting this letter as we speak here. <laughs> it, it gets even worse because at Maegashira 17 East, the final ranking on this Bonske, Mitoryu drops two numerical ranks after a seven and eight record. That's an over demotion, my friend. All because Jurio Rikshi have rights now. I, I'm done with this episode. I'm done. I'm done talking. We're lucky we're at the end of the Bonds K. Because if we weren't, I'd still be done with talking about the Bonds K. Wow, it's gonna be difficult to find a new bus driver for the podcast episodes when you get arrested for protesting this stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I I've booked my trip to Japan. Uh, already. Uh, I'm going to be there in just a couple of weeks. I'll be standing outside of uh, the Kokuki Con uh, holding up my poster. I imagine I'll be very lonely there because I booked a trip in an Airbnb to Tokyo, forgetting that it was going to be on Osaka. Uh, so <laughs> I'm going to be protest. I don't know how much good it'll do, but I'm going to make my voice heard. Do your best not to run into our field correspondent B because he is still convinced that we owe him payment for services rendered. Mm. Gabby, cancel the trip to Japan. All right, we're good. We're good. <laughs> good. I'm not, I'm not giving that guy a dollar. What? Is, we're good. Yeah, yeah, we're good now. All right. So, in order to create room for these blasphemous Jurio promotees, <laughs> we had to demote some Rikshi out of the Makauchi division. Those being Ichinojo, who was suspended at the previous tournament, uh, Tochi Noshin, who had to pull out due to injury in the previous tournament, and Chiyomaru, who was ineffective throughout the entire tournament. <laughs> Chiyomaru, uh, who was bad. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and you also have one spot that was opened up due to the retirement of Oki no Umi. Uh, so let's look and see how I did on Guess the Bonds K. I got 26 perfect predictions out of a possible 42. So that is 62% bullseyes. Uh, my previous best on a prediction was 79%. So we're, we're low of my previous best, but not bad. I had six additional Rikchi at the correct rank, but on the wrong side. So that is 32 Rikchi total at the correct rank. So that is a uh, 76% hit rate. My previous best, best on a prediction was 88% hit rate. So nice. not not my best prediction overall, but it wasn't bad. Well, uh, I mean, and- you did get like obviously the the Jurio heresy. I think I'm going to start calling it uh, that threw stuff off. But it but you did get the proper number of Sanyaku slots though, right? Like you- yes, yeah. Ex- so we did. Yeah, that that would have absolutely screwed you the way it has in the past when the way it did on the last 
the last was that one. just the last one where yeah it was a slightly different number of guys in Sanyaku and therefore your entire Bonsuke was garbage yeah I had nine Sanyaku Rikshi and the actual Bonsuke had 10 and so I finished like 62nd to Ugh, the previous yeah. guess of Bonsuke uh so the bet the best guess on this edition of the guess of Bonsuke was 36 at the correct rank so I was behind by four I'd like to see that be a little bit closer but you know what can you do they 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 broke the rules this time, so it, that's not <laughs> the on me. rules, okay? Yeah. They're there for a reason. Yeah. <laughs> so this Basho, I ranked 14th out of 166, uh, tied for 13th, actually, um, which is a 12-3 and 3 equivalent record, according to Guess the Bonds K. So I, I looked at my standings. I had, like, a year plus of 10 win equivalents, and then last Basho, I had an 8-7. and seven. Uh, So... Still standing strong at what would be an Ozeki rank uh, for Guess the Bonds K. If they were generous, could be Yokozuna, according to Guess the Bonds K records. We, we've had some 13 and twos, maybe a 14 and one in there, but I don't think we've ever had them like back to back to definitely say, yeah, that could be Yokozuna. So I'm still going to say I'm an Ozeki Guess the Bonds K guesser. You're in a uh, real Takakashi situation here, aren't you? Exactly. Yeah. Uh, my current overall ranking is unknown. Uh, the website has not been updated, and the only reason I know where I finished is uh, somebody on Sumo Forum that's associated with Guess the Bonds K but doesn't update the website uh, posted a list of the standings. Uh, I know that I'm still in the top 10, uh, but I don't know where I fall. My guess is previously I was number eight overall. My guess is I'm gonna, I might move up a little bit because I finished – fifth among the previous people that were in the top 10. Uh, cool. So okay. I would imagine I'd go up at least a little bit. Uh, my worst guess on this Bonds K is two people that tied for my worst guess in quite some time. Uh, I missed Hoku Seho and Oho by five total ranks. So two and a half numerical ranks. It's been a while since I've missed somebody by. Yeah. That badly. Yeah. Maybe even or, uh, it might even have been a while since I missed somebody by more than one and a half ranks. So missing two people by two and a half ranks is bad for me. <laughs> for for context, counting only the Maigashira 14 and 15 ranks, that's enough errors that it would be worse than your best total bonds K ever done. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> there there's 13 slots wrong between Maigashira 14 East and 15 West. When in the past you've gotten an, an entire bonds K with only 12. Uh, 12 yeah. misses. Yep. That's nuts. But yeah, overall, much better fairing on this uh, Bonds K than the previous one. I, I'm feeling better. <laughs> especially <laughs> like, one. especially when you look at it relatively, because like, yeah, 14th place out of like, what, 150, 160 or 166, whatever. 166, yeah. Yeah, there you go. So yeah, top 10% for sure. Absolutely. I'm going to do that math exactly right now. Yeah. <laughs> because so that's top, the rules. <laughs> top eight and a half percent. Thank you very mm, much. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. I missed that. <laughs> uh, looking at the Bonds K, uh, just some of the notable things, the biggest uh, jumps up the Bonds K that we saw, uh, Daishoho moving up nine ranks from Jurio 6 to Maku Uchi, uh, Maigashira 13. Uh, Koto Shoho up eight ranks from Maigashira 13 to Maigashira uh, 5. Uh, and then Keen Bozon up Jurio 5 to uh, Maigashira 14. That's seven rank jump for him. Nice. Uh, biggest drops down the Bonds K, you had Ichi Nojo dropping from Maigashira 7 down to Jurio 3, I believe. Takayasu dropping from Sexy Wake to Maigashira 7. And Oho <laughs> and Tochi Noshin both dropping seven spots at, as well. We are going to have seven Rikshi at their career high rankings, those being Kiribayama, Ichi Yamamoto, Hira de Umi, the ancient Azumaru, Kin Bozan, Bushozan, and Hoku Seho. Three of those Rikshi are making their Makuuchi debut. Uh, the very exciting Kim Bozon, the very exciting Hokuseho, and the Matt Bushozon. Uh <laughs> <laughs> I will say that uh, for six of those seven guys, it's their highest rank so far. But for Azumaru, it, this is this, his peak. It's this is all the peak downhill. for sure. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. Wow, uh, I have an opinion about Azumaru finally. Hey, all it takes is him screwing you over in the prediction series. Dae show took a while for me to care about, but we got there. <laughs> it only took a you show. <laughs> <laughs> Even then it was like, all right, fine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think that's still where we're at with Dae show. It's like, you got 10 wins. All right, fine. Okay. You're okay, I guess. 
You're not going to be Yozeki, but you, know, you can hover around the joy for a while, I guess. <laughs> All right, Jake, need your help in determining our snub of the Bonds K and luck of the Bonds K. Uh, we had for snub of the Bonds K, Takakesho, who was denied Yokozuna after a Yusho and Yusho equivalent. Hokuto Fuji, who was demoted in favor of Sato no Umi when Hokuto Fuji won that tiebreaker. We have Ura, who was demoted in favor of two Rikshi that deserve to be ranked below him. Oho, demoted in favor of Jurio Rikshi that he deserved to be the same rank as the Nerve. And Mitori you who was demoted who was over demoted in favor of a jury of Rikshi that he deserved to be one rank lower than so Jake who who would be your snub of the bonds K I mean it's very obviously either Oho or Matoru the the jury scandal here yeah I, it, I'll call it, this a scandal yeah oh absolutely uh, <laughs> I expect say, retirement uh, papers from everybody on the bonds K committee I, I'll say that uh, I guess I would vote for Matoru uh, just because he not just the not just the indignity of of like being demoted in favor of a lesser wrestler from Jurio, but also now because it results in him being at the bottom of the division. Yeah, and over demoted in favor. Yes, of Jurio it, yeah, just shameful conduct from the committee here. Absolutely. <laughs> uh, 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 conversely, strong... I refuse to give a luck of the bonds K to one of those subhumans from Jurio. <laughs> <laughs> so let's talk about anyone else who may have gotten <laughs> yes. luck of so, the Bonds K. Luck of the Bonds K candidates. I had Onosho, who broke Sanyaku bias uh, to be ranked ahead of a Rikshi he deserved to be two ranks ahead of. Uh, and Ichiyamamoto, <laughs> who was promoted in favor of a Rikshi that he deserved to be behind. Uh, and he was promoted ahead of him for literally no reason. Uh, I'll say Ichiyamamoto because that one is just sheer spite hell? to whoever yeah. the other who was the other guy ura. Who did, ura that he got uh pushed in front of yeah that mm -hmm. what the hell man <laughs> absolutely yeah all right so that is all we've got at least all i've got on the haru bonske jake what are your final thoughts on the haru bonske let me update you on the uh warhammer 40k novels <laughs> i've been reading <laughs> No, I'm we, good. <laughs> we did have a question on Twitter. Uh, let me pull that up. Real oh, quick. somebody said which. Uh, um... Oh, it was, was it Tim Sumo? He asked, "Where is it?" Uh, it was which like which which Rikshi would be in which Space Marine chapter? Yeah, yeah. There you go. I don't know what any of that means, so that's on you, Jake. <laughs> well, there's 18 different legions, uh, and they all have, like, it's very sci-fi in that, like, each faction has, like, one trait, and, like, that's their whole thing. <laughs> so, um, I don't know. I think uh, there, there's, I, I should have put more thought into this, because there's there's got to be some good answers, but, like, let's see, there's, there's, one, uh, there's one faction that's, like, really good at crafting things, there's one, uh, oh, what's the, Endo would be an Imperial Fist because his uh, defense is incredible. And that's like his defining characteristic, at least in my mind, the way that he wrestles, he is all all defense and he's very good at that. Mm -hmm. um, and then the rivals would be the Iron Warriors who are really good at offense, but not necessarily defense. And I think that might be somebody who goes kind of balls to the wall, like- um, Yeah, Ono oh, Show. Yeah, yeah, Ono oh, Show is kind of who I was thinking of, like- we're just going to go straight forward. We're going to bust through your defense and I don't have a plan B, <laughs> but yeah, that, that was, uh, I, I, I really appreciate that question. And I, I want to put some more thought into it. Cause I think there's some funnier answers out there. All right. Well, we'll tap you again for the, uh, preview for the Haru Basha, which will be coming out uh, early next week. We're going to be re recording the Haru preview earlier than usual, so uh, that should be coming out at the beginning of the week yep. next Monday, week. Monday, maybe Tuesday, but probably Monday. Yeah. Uh, so if you enjoy this podcast, you can leave us a five-star review on Apple Podcasts or your favorite podcast listening service. You can check out Grand Sumo Breakdown on Twitter, Facebook, or YouTube. Uh, you can check us out at grandsumobreakdown.wordpress.com. We have an email, grandsumobreakdown at gmail.com. You can send us any comments, questions, or corrections, or you can leave us you a can voicemail. You can leave us a voicemail at 80561-3SUMO. That's... <laughs> 
<laughs> oh, that hurt. I knew we were getting close, and I'm like, how can I do the number again wrong <laughs> to make him upset? Oh, that hurt. <laughs> What did I do last time? Did I read the number before saying the, yeah, the you letters said, or something? Uh, you can leave us a voicemail at 805-613-SUMO. That's 805-613-7866, which yeah, is the okay, which opposite. is backwards. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, but that no, one the, just physically hurt. The the rhythm? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> did you get that wrong? <laughs> yeah, it's 805-613-7866. That's but when you mix in five, the letters with it, too. Yeah. <laughs> 8056137 UMO. <laughs> yeah. 3S UMO. Whatever. 3S UMO. Yeah. Oh god, yeah, it hurt to say, but I knew yeah. it would hurt you more because you're the <laughs> rules guy. Exactly. You got to follow the rules. It's 3 3 4, okay? That it, that's how everybody knows to do it and honestly, I will be calling the cops on you and I will not be <laughs> posting bail this time. I oh, will dear. tell all of our friends that I will call the cops on them if they post your bail. All right. Here's and then we'll confession. excommunicate you. Yeah. Yeah, of course. Here, here's my confession, police. I did do that. <laughs> <laughs> and yes, he did call you for me doing that. <laughs> That's not misuse of public funds or whatever. <laughs> of course not. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Haru preview will be coming out early next week. Basho starts on Sunday, March 12th. Thank you for listening. Thank you for listening to Grand Sumo Breakdown. Until next time, throw your salt high and keep moving forward.